Hi boys and girls, I hope you had a great morning learning at your home. And today I'm going to record a lesson using this book that was in your packet. And the title of this little reader is called What's Hatching? So we'll be using this book and inside of that book there was a piece of paper folded up like this and we'll be using that after we read the book so we'll be using that book for this lesson and then i have some things here that i'm going to show you uh, but i want to get started by letting you know i'm super excited i saw lots of you have done some i ready lessons this morning i can tell a lot of you want to try to meet that i ready challenge number four and do your 40 minutes of, of learning using i ready so super proud of that also just wanted to point out and remind you on our YouTube channel, there is a playlist all the way over in the far right side, right next to where we have all of our other playlists that we used every day in our classroom, the morning playlist and the cleanup song playlist and all of the other lists that have all of the learning songs and activities that we use on our smart board. You will find one of them that says oviparous animals. And that playlist has lots of great videos with real pictures of real animals that are born from eggs. And some of those videos compare um, those animals that are hatched and born from eggs to animals that are not hatched and not born from eggs. They're born alive. So I'll show you a couple of those animals and compare them. I have some little puzzles here that I want to show you. Now this is an animal, this is an example of an animal that is not oviparous. It is not hatched from an egg. So take a look at the picture. The words at the top say newborn. So that's an animal that is born brand new. And the next thing that happens after that animal is born, it starts to change just a little, gets a little bit bigger. And I think now you can tell what that animal is. So first it was a newborn. Then we call it a puppy, and then that puppy turns into a dog. So that is an example of an animal that is not oviparous. That animal is viviparous. It's not hatched from an egg after it is born. Now I'll show you some examples of animals that do hatch from an egg. So first I'll show you the egg. So this is a picture of an egg. It's very small, it's, it really is blue. That's the real picture of this real egg. It's in a nest. They're small, only about this big, about the size of like a grape egg. The next thing after the egg hatches is a chick comes out. So that is what the egg <clears throat> cracks open and the little thing inside of it is a chick and it lives in a nest, needs to be fed, and then that chick will turn into a bird. And this type of bird is called a robin. So robin eggs are very hard, or very easy for us to tell because they are a pretty, pretty blue color. I've actually seen a couple of um, broken robin's eggs out in my yard um, underneath some of the trees in my backyard. Um, after the eggs hatch, I think some of those um, those eggshells get thrown out of the nest probably are, are really crowded with the new babies and those eggshells get thrown out and they're in my backyard. This is another example of an animal that is born from an egg. Oviparous. So this is a picture of the egg. Now this egg is a little bit bigger, probably about, about this big around about the size of like an orange. This egg you'll notice is not in a nest like we normally would see in a tree. It looks like there is some sand around it. It's all white. Then the next thing that comes out is called a hatchling. It's a hatchling. That's the word at the top. And I think you can tell what that hatchling is is a baby sea turtle. So that baby sea turtle was born from a white egg that was laid by the mom up on the sand. And then the mom goes back out into the ocean 
and then those hatchlings have to crawl their way all the way through the sand to get back to the water after they're born. Their mom doesn't come back and get them. They go all together with all the other brother and sister hatchlings that were hatched from those eggs. So I noticed the robins had about, they had three eggs in the nest and I noticed that the sea turtle lays many eggs in their nest. Here's another animal that is born from an egg. And this, whoop, I'll show you what it looks like first. I gave you a clue. This is what this egg looks like. It's teeny, 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 tiny, about the size of a piece of rice. It's very small, it's kind of squishy, it doesn't have a hard shell, and I see the color is yellow. So this egg will have a grub that comes out, okay? So a grub will come out, it looks just like that. And after the grub changes a little bit, it will turn into a ladybug. So notice, tiny little yellow egg, grub will come out, and then it will turn into the colorful ladybugs. And we learned a lot about ladybugs earlier in the school year, that most of them are red with black spots, but many of them can be different colors. We had a good book in our classroom about that. I'm going to show you two more different kinds of eggs and then we will read that book together called What's Hatching. So here is a picture of an egg. Now these eggs are about the same size as the sea turtle eggs. Uh, they're, notice that they're just laid on like the land. Sometimes you might see these in the grass or you might see them around rocks, but they're not very big, about the size of like a baseball. And what comes out of this is called a snakelet. So they don't even have a beak. They just have to grow big and big and big. And as they grow bigger, they crack that egg shell and the snakelet will then turn into a snake. So a tiny snake grows up into a bigger snake. And depending on the type of snake, you'll notice that the sizes of the eggs can be different sizes. I'm going to show you one other kind of egg, an oviparous animal, and it looks just like this. And just like the ladybug, these are teeny, teeny, tiny, again, about the size of one piece of rice. Each egg is about that size. And these are kind of clear. They don't really have a color. But as they grow, one of these will come out, and it is called a nymph. So it will grow this tiny little creature will come out of it. It is called a nymph, and then that creature will turn into a grasshopper. So we start as a teeny tiny little baby egg, a nymph, and a grasshopper. So now that you've seen that many different animals can be hatched from eggs, and we notice that they all, all the eggs look a little bit different, we'll talk more about that later in the week, we are going to spend a little bit of time reading this book called What's Hatching? And notice that title has a question mark at the end of it. So the author is asking you what's hatching out of the egg. So you see lots of pictures. These picture clues can give you some ideas of what types of animals will be in this book. Um, we just talked about the ladybug. That's an oviparous animal. A frog. We talked about a frog and an alligator or a crocodile yesterday in their story. There's a tiny little ant. There's a penguin, and we learned a lot about penguins hatching from eggs when we talked about that in the month of January when we learned about polar animals. There is a chicken and a spider. So let's open to the first page, and we're going to use our best superpowers. I'm going to use my pointer power and I'm going to think about the words in the story and what makes sense. A, the first word is a t, -t turtle. A turtle hatches from an egg. Now you'll notice the book is missing all the pictures and that's what you're going to be using those pictures for after you read the story the first time. If you need a little help with some of those words, you can have those pictures in front of you and think about which picture could this word be? I noticed the T, and if I look at my pictures, 
turtle is the only one, only picture that has the T sound in the beginning of the word. A, there's an L for the first sound. And if I look at my pictures, this must be the word ladybug hatches from an egg. So I'm using my pointer power. I've already picked up on the pattern and I'm going to use that sound power. The first sound in the pictures will help us. A, there's a beginning sound to S. So I'm going to look at my pictures. I see a snake. Do you think this can be the word snake? A snake hatches from an egg. All right, so now we're going to look at this. Now, this has a digraph in the beginning, and we haven't had a lot of time to talk about digraphs. Digraphs are two letters that are squished together to make a new sound. Whenever you see that C and H together, those two letters make the sound CH. So it's like the T and H that we learned make the sound TH for Thursday in the word THE. C and H, when squished together, don't say K. They make the sound ch. So which picture on our paper can be a ch ch? Not an alligator or a penguin. I see a chicken. Could this be the word ch chicken? I think so. Let's go back and reread. A chicken hatches from an egg. Digraphs are a little bit tricky, but it helps you read lots of other trickier words when we learn about digraphs. And this is an A sound. A, A, or A would be the beginning sound. So look at your pictures. I see an alligator. Could this be the word alligator? Alligator. It's a big word. An alligator hatches from an egg. And there's two more pages left. So I have two more pictures on my paper that we have not read yet. I think I know which one this is because I see the beginning sound of P. P makes the sound P. This must be the word penguin. I'm going to go back and reread. A penguin hatches from an egg. Now there is going to be one picture that doesn't have just one animal on it. It has many animals on it. There are lots of animals that hatch from eggs. Now you'll notice that last page, that pattern is broken. And authors do that to make sure that we're really focusing on the words. Some of the words are the same as the other um, words on the other sentences, but the pattern is different. There are lots of animals that hatch from eggs. And that must be where I have to use this picture of many different animals that hatch from eggs. So ducks and birds. Oh, look at that. Crabs, spiders, and frogs. So boys and girls, after you read the story from beginning to end with the pictures beside you to think about what the word is that makes sense, then you can go back and you can cut out each of these pictures, cut out that rectangle, and then you will glue it into the spot on each page where it makes the most sense. After you glue each page, again, I like to read each page again, practice my reading. And then after you glue all the pictures on to each page, then you can go back with your crayons or your markers or your colored pencils, whatever you have at home for your coloring tool, and you could color these animals with real colors. So you are going to go back into your story after you read it the first time, and you are going to put the ladybug, the snake, the penguin, the lots of different animals, the chicken, the turtle, and the alligator onto each page and then you can color them with your three star coloring. So I hope you liked practicing that book, What's Hatching. After you read it, 
and put the cards in and illustrate with your coloring. Put this book in a safe place. Add it to your library at your house so you can go back and reread it anytime you want to practice your reading. I hope you liked that lesson. I am going to record another lesson, um, another read aloud that is going to be a fiction story about a turtle. So you can enjoy this lesson and then later take a listen to the book called Franklin and the Tooth Fairy. See you soon.